civilian and military, quartz crystal has become an essential raw material. Precision ground quartz crystal plates are used in filters, oscillators, and frequency standard circuits in almost all forms of long-distance communication. Yet the high cost and scarcity of quartz crystals have deterred their even wider electronic application. Crystals that are large enough and structurally suitable for telephone filters and other electronic uses are found mainly in the interior of Brazil. And because of difficulties in mining and transportation, this supply has been at best uncertain. Because of flaws and imperfections in most natural crystal stones, only 40 to 60 percent of the purchased quartz is suitable in the production of crystal plates. Much of the crystal is lost as scrap or as dust during sawing operations. Further losses occur because of the irregular shape of the crystal and internal imperfections such as twinning and foreign inclusions. During processing, about 97% of the original quartz is lost. Because of the waste, the price of quartz in the form of finished plates rises to more than an equal weight in gold. To provide a dependable and inexpensive source of quartz, especially during national emergencies, the Bell Telephone Laboratories initiated in 1946 experiments in artificial growing of quartz crystals. The insolubility of quartz, an advantage in its electronic uses, was here a disadvantage for very high pressures and temperatures are required to make quartz soluble for growing process. After several years of experimentation, the Bell Laboratories developed a process for growing quartz. In this hydrothermal process, small pieces of quartz, called the nutrient, are immersed in an alkaline solution in one zone of a tightly closed vessel. Under heat and pressure, the quartz dissolves. The liquid then flows by convection into a growing zone where quartz leaves the solution and is deposited on specially cut seed plates. The same solution can perform these opposite functions because its temperature is kept higher in the dissolving or nutrient zone than in the growth zone. At lower temperature in the growth zone, the solution becomes supersaturated with quartz, causing it to deposit on the seed plates. In quantity crystal production, pressures exceeding 10 tons per square inch were used at over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. By 1956, the process had been perfected to the degree that Western Electric Company Bell Systems Manufacturing and Supply Unit could start the development of production facilities. On the grounds of the Merrimack Valley Works in North Andover, Massachusetts, a temporary building was constructed for this experiment. The first problem to be solved was the design of a vessel for crystal growing. Those used by Bell Laboratories in their experiments were far too small for quantity production. The conditions that the vessels had to withstand were unique. Both high pressure vessels and high temperature vessels were in existence, but not in combination in large enough sizes. Also, the ability of most steels to withstand high pressures 
decreases rapidly at high temperatures. In addition, the solution was corrosive, and the expensive vessels had to have a long lifespan. After extensive studies, a chromium molybdenum alloy steel was chosen for its corrosion resistance and strength at high temperatures. The most difficult part in designing the vessel was to find a successful closure. At the required pressures, it would be impractical to use a gasket-type seal. The more than 400 tons of pressure acting against the closure would tend to force it away from the gasket, thus permitting leakage. After experiments with several types of ring seals, all of which were unsatisfactory, the solution was found. This was a specially designed seal which did not use a gasket. Instead, the pressure within the vessel was applied to make the seal more positive. It had been feared that spurious crystal growth would take place within the clearance between the closure and the vessel, below the seal area. This would cause the closure to stick to the vessel. seal was found to be leak-proof and free of spurious crystal growth. All of the test vessels were then equipped with it. To heat the vessels and control the temperature differential between nutrient and growing zones, band-type heaters were placed along the length of the vessel. Since it was difficult to observe the inside of the vessels during operation, the heater placement had to be tested in a programmed test period. By varying the number and positions, a proper combination was found that would produce correct temperature gradients within the zones. Thermocouples were installed in wells at the bottom of the vessels and in the closure. These wells reached within three quarters of an inch from the inside surface to reflect process temperature. To measure pressure, pressure transducers were set in small openings in the closure. The thermocouples and pressure transducers were used as sensing devices, with their outputs connected to a continuous recorder. Raw material for Western crystal production was the same as used by Bell Laboratories, small pieces of natural quartz. These are in abundant supply and can be obtained at a fraction of the cost of larger crystals. The precisely cut seed plates were attached to a rack by spring press. These seed plates can be cut either from natural quartz or from grown quartz. No deterioration of quality has been observed using sea plates cut from grown quartz. Sodium hydroxide pellets, along with distilled water, produced an alkaline solution which increased the solubility of the quartz nutrient. Other than loading and unloading, the only manual operation in the pilot plant was the setting of a variac which controlled the heating power in the growth zone. The rest was done by an automatic control system. As a safety precaution, a high temperature device automatically shut off the power and actuated an alarm if the temperature rose too high. 
A ruptured disc also safely reduced the pressure to atmospheric level in case excessive pressures occurred inside the vessel. With these controls, it was possible to operate the plant unattended during nights and weekends. The number of variables present and changes in procedure in the transition from research to manufacture sometimes cause unexpected and undesirable results. This happened in the crystal growing process. Soon after the problem of designing a leak proof closure had been solved, several of the runs began to produce crystals that were cracked. Sometimes, in an affected run, all of the crystals would be full of cracks. On other runs, just as inexplicably, the crystal seed plates would simply disappear without a trace. The first step was to find out when the cracking and dissolving occurred during the growth cycle. Now, the carefully recorded data paid off. Analyzing temperature data on the runs, it was found that a correlation existed between cracking or dissolving and the differences of temperature in the two zones. If the difference was too high during the warm-up period, cracking occurred. On the other hand, if the difference was too low, the crystals would dissolve. Once the correct differential was established, the cracking and dissolving problem was solved. Tests confirmed that after warm-up, the differential could be safely increased to any value. With the problems of quantity production solved, Western Electric constructed a new building at Merrimack Valley, exclusively for the growing and processing of quartz. Here, 20 vessels are loaded and unloaded in rotation for continuous production. The plant will produce 90% of the quartz used by the Bell Telephone System, the largest user of quartz crystals in the country. Natural quartz has several disadvantages, which make it wasteful to process. Among them are its unevenness and the foreign inclusions that usually occur in it. The quartz grown at Western Electric has fewer cracks and impurities. It can also be grown in predetermined dimensions, thus simplifying processing operations. It is estimated that these improvements will result in at least two and a half times more crystal plates per pound from grown quartz than from natural quartz. It is possible that in the future, the cost of crystals may be reduced enough to enable their substitution for more conventional circuit elements thus expanding their application in modern communication. Thank <laughs> you. 